Hello everyone, this is Laura coming to you today from the Last Days Ministries. Now this is an apologetics ministry. What we do is we take out the Word of God and we compare what these teachers are teaching us according to the Word of God, the truth of God, and we're told to test every spirit. So, I want to just look at Lisa Buldo today, and uh, she says, Be victorious, believe, speak, receive, empowering you to live in victory through right believing and the power of the spoken word. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to do what they do in America, but anyway. <laughs> um, but this woman here believes herself to be a victorious life mentor, certified health coach, author, speaker, and TV host. Now, underneath here, we have TV interviews, and this is what Lisa believes she's called to. Lisa is called to help the multitudes to live in victory, spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially. And it says here, watch Lisa's TV interview with Carmen on TVN's Praise the Lord. Uh, Lisa shares her personal testimony on marriage, divorce, the occult, depression, weight loss tips, and more. Now, this woman ugh, says she came out of the New Age and that she's been delivered from psychicism and, you know. But essentially, she's gone from witchcraft into witchcraft because um, Marilyn Hickey is one of these word of faith moguls where they say, speak to that billfold, tell that billfold to be full. And so they believe that if you speak something, that there's power in the words that you speak and it will come to you and it will oops and it will make you rich or it will kill you or it will give you um emotional health and all that kind of stuff so i've kind of just lost the, the one here but um i'm just going to pick it up here lisa bulldo.com so we're going to go to lisa bulldo.com and uh, yeah, international. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm just going to go to, to media here. So we'll go to media, TV interviews. This is the one. Yeah. Okay, so she believes that she has been set free from this psychicism and all this kind of stuff, right? So... Now, I'll leave the link underneath, so in case you want to have the, listen to the interview, fine and good. Okay, now here she is with Paula today, with Pastor Paula White. Now, there's no such thing as a woman pastor. According to the scripture, it's a male, the husband of one wife, so she's totally in rebellion. But she's a word of faith mogul. She also does not believe that Jesus was the only begotten son of God, so she's a heretic and... Lisa Buldo is talking to her on here. So here we have Larry Hook with Paula White talking about how Jesus is not the only begotten Son of God. Now, um, just to go back here and the TV interview. So we go further down and we see her on other stuff, okay? So apparently she's on Family Life Radio, Sunday Night Radio Show, WK2O Radio, Daily Moments, The Debbie Sharev Show. Um, I don't know any of these, but I'm going to read them out for the sake of precious brothers and sisters in America. WMPH Radio, Heart to Heart, WWJC Radio, Northland Note Notebook, and CJCJ Radio, This Morning Show, Voice America, Blog Talk Radio, and Living Fit with Laura Mack. Okay, so this is this woman here. Now, I'm going to play a video, and as I play the video, I'm going to comment on it. And then I'm going to read the scripture, and um, I'm going to read an article from gotquestions.org. And we'll go from there. Okay, let's go. So, the title of this video was The Power of Jesus' Blood to Heal You. Now, even that is wrong. And I'll explain why as we go. 
Hi, this is Lisa Boldo. Today I want to speak to you about the power of Jesus' blood to heal you. Jesus took 39 stripes on his back to purchase healing for you. There are many promises in the Bible, but healing and salvation are facts. That okay, um, when Jesus was being beaten, the 39 stripes, was he was taking the punishment and um, started the um, being um, tortured because he was on his way up to Golgotha and the place of the skull where he would die for our sin. They're already done because of what Jesus did at that cross. No. When Jesus was on the cross, he died for our sin. And nowhere in scripture does it say that he died to heal us as far as physically speaking. Let's keep going. When he died on the cross, that physical death, and then he was physically resurrected, we know that when we ask Jesus to come into our hearts and be our Lord and Savior, we have eternal life. We are saved. We know that. And when you know that you know that you know that, no one can take that away from you. Healing, you, healing is received the same exact way. With salvation, you prayed a prayer. You received salvation. Healing is the exact same way. Okay, Lisa, the first question I want to ask you is, which Jesus are you talking about? Because the biblical Jesus died on the cross for our sin. That's the biblical Jesus. The Bible says if they teach another Jesus, or if they teach another gospel, let them be anathema. What she's preaching right here is a different gospel and a different Jesus. The type of Jesus she's talking about here is a genie in a bottle that will come out and give you all that you want, all your dreams, your destiny provided, your healing is done. So let's keep going. You have to realize that Jesus already purchased healing for you. So you need to focus on those stripes that he took for you when you're, you know, he's already purchased it. So when you're asking the Lord to heal you, it's already done. Okay, now I want you to really listen to what she's saying. When you're asking God to heal you, it's already done. This is a different Jesus that she's talking about. But if someone would listen to her, they might think they're talking about the Jesus of the Bible. If they don't read the, the real about the real Jesus, they're going to be really confused and in an awful lot of confusion and in an awful lot of pain and suffer terrible guilt. What she's doing is she's putting a whole boulder of guilt upon a sick person. Okay? This is wicked wicked beyond belief i want you to think about this there's a precious brother in the lord and i think he has cerebral palsy his name is justin peters now justin peters has not been healed but he exposes these kind of teachers but he has cerebral palsy and he was told as a child by these one of these word of faith ministers that he didn't have enough faith that you just have to believe that this has happened and you know something it brings a terrible amount of shame not only then are these people sick but they're walking around with shame because they don't have enough faith i want you to think about it, like really think about it that you know i i mean i maybe there are people that are listening to me right now that have sickness i want to say right now it's not your fault it's not because you don't have enough faith it's not because jesus didn't die um, so you know for healing he died for your sin the world that we're living in right now is very much fallen okay and it's wasting away okay and our but we do contract illnesses and sicknesses as Christians yes we do and yes the real Jesus the real Jesus we can ask Jesus to heal us and if the real Jesus decides to heal you, he will heal you if he chooses, if he thinks it's right or if he chooses to do. Now, the thing is with Jesus is that Jesus is God and he knows what's best, right? Now, the thing is, as well as that, we've got to understand that this world is falling away or, you know, it's, it's, it's rotting, you know, moth and rust and all of that. It's rotting here. The only time we will be perfect will be when we go to be with Christ. We will have our glorified bodies 
and we will be um, ruling and reigning with him. The Lord will, will destroy this earth that we're on. He'll make a new heavens and a new earth, and we will rule, rule and reign with him in the thousand year reign. So that's the only time we're going to be perfect. This woman is a manipulator, and try, and all of this does is it puts a big boulder um, and puts chains around a person's heart, and they become very disheartened, and they think that I'm not good enough. Jesus won't heal me, but He died on the died on the cross to heal me. So why am not I healed? Yeah. You know, this is just this is just horrible so let's keep going you need to thank him and say lord i receive my healing yeah you're lying in bed about to die of cancer you need to thank him and say lord i'm healed no they're not healed no they still have cancer yes god can heal but they're not healed but you need to just thank him that you're healed. Think about the, the logic behind that. That's a lie. They haven't been healed. Okay? Okay, let's keep going. For whatever it is that you need, no one can want it for you. You've got to want it. Someone can lay <laughs> No one can want it. You've got to want it. Now, think about this. I'll, I'll be honest with, with some of you guys. I've suffered terribly with illness over, all over my life. And... Through the illness, I've become very, very close to Jesus. Very close to God. I've had to trust him in times where I couldn't trust him. I trusted him. And he always came through for me. Even when I was very sick. Okay. Um, this kind of teaching when I was a baby Christian messed with me so much. You know, people saying to me, you're ill. Oh, but you just got to believe you're, you're healed. And you'll be healed because it's in the atonement. So that what that did then, it made me feel like I was a lesser Christian, that I was a nobody, that I was a nothing. And, that, and this makes me cry because I know that there are so many precious people, maybe precious American people or people from around the world who suffer with illness and they feel like, they hear this garbage and they feel like oh, I'm less of a Christian because I don't have enough faith. That's not true, brothers and sisters. That's not true. It's just the world is, is you know, it's, it's rotting and it's dying. So let's keep going. Hands on you for healing, but you still have to receive it. If you're having a hard time believing for your healing, focus on those 39 stripes that Jesus took on his back for you. Now, Focus on his 39 stripes. I want you to think about this, right? So you've got your mind and it's focusing on the 39 stripes. You're thinking about the 39 stripes. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Still not getting well. Thinking about the 39 stripes. Still not to give up. The reason why you're not getting well is because in those 39 stripes, he didn't provide divine healing that's why nothing's happening because what this woman is saying is a lie let's keep going because the bible says that by his stripes you were healed okay just focus on that don't focus on your sickness focus on his stripes that he purchased for you and when you start meditating and focusing on that and you're seeing what he did for you and the flesh just being ripped off of his back and all the precious blood that he shed for your healing and no jesus didn't shed the blood for your healing jesus shed the blood to cover you for your sin because there's power in the blood and that blood wiped away the sin of the world it didn't wipe away the healing or the sickness it wiped away the heat uh, the sin your sin my sin all of our sins because there's power in the blood of Christ for you know for our salvation and then I mean just let it infiltrate you and then just 
Thank Him for your healing. Thank Him, thank Him, thank Him. In Jesus' name, receive your healing and be healed. <sighs> um, extremely manipulative. Now, let's just look at Isaiah 53 in its correct context. It's very important that we do this. Now, I will, I'll just start at Isaiah 53, 3. Okay. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. Now, and this is Isaiah, this is the scripture that she's ripped out of context, uh, eisegeted, in other words, read something into the script that is not there. It's not there, people. This is what these false teachers do. They read into the scripture that was not meant to be, ex um, was not meant to be um, eisegeted, like that, uh, basically exegeted, in other words, that you, when you read the scripture you pull it at, you pull the message out of the written word of God you're not supposed to read something into this but I want to just read this okay and I know what I'm about to see, may, it's, do may seem simplistic but you know sometimes when we read the word of God over and over and over again sometimes it becomes we're just used to it you know and and we get so used to the words that we don't sometimes we don't and, and I'm maybe I'm, I'm this is just for me but I think in general and I'm not saying everyone is like this but sometimes we can forget what those words really mean so I'm going to just read a few words I'll read the scripture first but then I'm going to read some of the words and I'll see the meaning but he was wounded for our transgressions okay let's look up let's look up transgressions okay Define transgression. An act that goes against a law, a r rule, or a code of conduct. An offence. Okay. Um, one of the words here is sin. Okay. So, let's see. Transgression. So, the next word. Sorry, guys. Um, here. The next word, he was bruised for our iniquities. Now let's look at iniquities. Let's define iniquities. So iniquity is immoral or grossly unfair behavior. Okay. Um, so that's what iniquity means there, brothers and sisters. He was um, the chastisement. Okay, so let's define chastisement. Okay, um, the act of chastising, pain inflicted for punishment and correction, discipline and punishment. Go over here, Isaiah. Of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed now what I want you to notice here is the context of all of this right this has to do with sin the context of this is wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with the stripes we are healed this has got nothing to do with physical healing. Now what I want to do is I'm going to come over here and it says what does the Bible say about healing? Now I'll leave the link underneath and you guys can read this for yourself. Answer, Isaiah 53, 5. Okay, um, but he was pierced for our transgressions. Okay, this is the ASV, but anyway. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace and by his wounds we are healed. Okay. 
which is then quoted in First Peter, he himself bore our sins in the body on the tree, that he might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. Now it would be interesting to look up First Peter in the King James Version, and I'm going to do that because I like the King James save. Sorry guys. <laughs> I'll copy and paste uh, if I can do this. Uh, copy and paste. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Okay. No. Okay, First Peter 2.24. We'll try this one more time. Copy. Yay! Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Paste. Okay. We go on here. And we go down here. That's KJV. Yeah, so in the in the King James Version in 224 in Bible Gateway, it says this. So wounds and stripes, I think pretty much are in the ESV is wounds and here is stripes by his stripe by whose stripes ye were healed. So in first Peter it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body sins in our own body on the tree that we were being dead to sins should live into righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed again context is sin so here we go so so let's read this isaiah 53 5 which is then quoted in first peter 2 24 is a key verse on healing but it is often misunderstood and misapplied but he was pierced for our transgressions he was crushed for our iniquities punishment that brought the peace upon him by his wounds we are healed the word translated healed can either can either mean spiritual or physical healing however the context of isaiah 53 and first peter 2 make it clear that it is speaking of spiritual healing spiritual not physical because that woman was lying he himself bore our sins in the body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed this verse is talking about sin and righteousness not sickness and disease therefore being healed in both verses is speaking of being forgiven and saved not physically healed okay um like I said down here, it says, um, ultimately, our full physical healing awaits in heaven. In heaven, there will be no more pain, sickness, disease, suffering, or death. And that's in the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth that passed away. And the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, preparing as a bride adorned for her. So what I'll do is I'll leave the link underneath for you to have a look at and so that's all i wanted to talk to you about today and um, just wanted to say uh, may the lord bless you may the lord keep you and may the lord bless you and i hope for those who are sick this has been an encouragement for you okay bye for now bye bye